If you wanna make sure that your Google contacts are always synced and up to date, look no further than this video. I'm gonna be going into detail about the very automation that you can build that takes this data from Airtable and keeps your Google contacts synced at all times. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. So if that's of interest and you wanna learn more about that, do check out our website. I'm gonna include links below. We have a lot of different resources we've built to help you get up to speed with Airtable. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. We're gonna be going through step-by-step -step building an automation that will keep your Google contacts up to date from the information that you keep in Airtable. So let's jump on into my screen and you'll see that I've already performed this automation here for person called Test McTesterson. So let's first just look at the automation in action and see how it's gonna work. So we can see that we currently have this contact information on this person. This is in my Google contacts. I have the company that Test McTesterson works for. I have his work email. I have his work phone number. And automatically, anytime we ever send this person an email, from our Google you know, suite from Gmail, we can track that interaction inside of our contacts. So that is really nice. If you're looking for a lightweight CRM that keeps track of interactions with somebody, this is a solution you can't afford to ignore. So let's jump into our little database over here. And you can see I've got a really straightforward database. I've got contacts and I've got companies. And so my contact exists with a full name, which is a formula combining my first and last name. So first name, last name, email, phone number, sample co is the company in this example. I also have company text and I'll get to why in a second. And I also have a last update field. These two pieces are gonna help us with the automation on the back end. So we'll come back to that. But the other piece here is company. So we connect our people with our company. And this is of course important because if you had somebody else that worked at sample co, let's say, uh, let's say this is another person or another example, and this person is another at example.com, and maybe they're 818-555-1212, and they also work for Sample Co. Well, then we wanna make sure we have that linked relationship, right? So we're linking our contact to our companies on the other table. So let's talk about why we have these other two pieces. It really comes down to the automation. When the automation is gonna work on the back end, it sees this company as a record because this is a link to a company rather than text. It looks like text to you and me, but from Airtable's perspective, this is a record and it has a record ID. And so we need to actually bring in that text in order to do something with the text, which is why we use a lookup field here. So this is just looking at the company's name pretty straightforward. So this is always going to match this in terms of the text displayed, but the way the data is going to work on the back end, we need it as a lookup field. And then this last update field here is simply using a last modified time field type. And what this field type does is it looks at either specific fields or all of the editable fields in a table, and it's going to tell you when something was last modified. So for example, right now, this says, 328 at 3 p.m. If I make a change to something, let's say I change the phone number to 14 instead of 12, you see that the last updated time reflects now the current time. So this is always gonna show you the most recently, uh, the most recent time that changes were made to any of the data in that database, or in this case, this particular contacts table. This is important for the automation. So let's jump into the automation. Now, I personally use Zapier. You may use Integromat or some other third-party tools to get this done. So the first part here is we are taking a new or updated record in Airtable, and that looks like this. You just need to select that trigger event from Airtable as your software that is going to initiate this trigger. Then we're going to have our account, so connect your account, set up your trigger to link to your base, and your table, and then look at that last update field. The last update field, again, is going to change the time whenever you make changes to your data, which is gonna then trigger this automation to do its thing again. That's exactly what you want. Now, from there, you're going to find a contact in Google Contacts. And so in this case, 
I set up the action to say, I want to search for somebody that has this exact name. So I'm looking in my contacts in Google for this full name and I'm comparing it. I'm, I'm using the full name in Airtable as my search. So I'm basically looking in all of my contacts in Google and saying, where does test McTesterson exist? And if they don't exist, check this box, create the Google contact if it doesn't exist. And so here we're going to come in and we're saying, look, if you find this person already, perfect. We're going to move on to the next step. But if you don't, then we're going to need to create this information. So give them a first name, right? This is the first name in the first name part of the Google contact, give them the last name. And then we also have email. And in this case, I'm imagining this is like a work account. So I'm going to make this an email work, uh, t work type phone number, same thing. It's a work phone number. And then the company, remember we have the text and the, uh, and the record. So my linked relationship shows up as the record ID R E C and then some gibberish here. This will always be the case for a linked relationship. And this is why we needed to use that lookup field that is looking up the text. So make sure you grab that proper text that shows you the, the name, the text of the name of the company. So you can bring that in for the company. And that's it. I mean, you might get more fancy here if you track address and other things, but for this example, I'm going to skip all of that. Now, once you have that all set up, then remember, this is only going to create a contact in the case where it doesn't find one. So you need to make sure that this automation updates a contact as well in the case where it finds an existing contact there, right? So then we need to set up a third step here. This is our second action. And this action will update the contact in Google contacts. Pretty straightforward. The most difficult part on this step is making sure that you connect to the right ID. And so you're looking for the field type that says original ID. And when you look for this, you'll go over to the custom side and you will find the ID that was found or created in the previous step. So again, we're going into our second step. Make sure you've toggled on the custom side here. Go to show all options and you're looking for the original ID and it will begin with people slash some random string. So bring that in. That's, that's how Google identifies the actual ID of that contact. And then we're going to need to make sure we update the information that we put in, in the second step. So again, bring in the first name, bring in the last name, bring in the text of the company, bring in the email address label it to work, bring in the phone number, label it to work, whatever else you have on yours, right? If you have addresses and whatnot as well, all good. So have that all set up and then make sure to turn your automation on and don't forget to give it a name because I'll tell you, I do this all the time and then I can't find which automation I'm looking for. So this is going to keep G contacts synced and I'll just label it like that. All right, now we can take this out for a spin again and see if it's going to keep our information up to date as we would hope. So let's add a new person here. This will be third example, third at example.com, 702-555-1212. And this person maybe works for Acme Co. And I'll just create a new company. So now we would expect that because this is now showing a new time here, we would expect that to send our trigger. Now this may take a couple minutes depending on the plan that you have. So I'm going to run this zap manually in the background to make sure that it does what it needs to do. We see that it's looking for a new or updated record and it finds one. So it's triggering and it has uh, updated that contact successfully. So if I pop into my Google contacts now, and I run a test for third, I can scroll through all of my different uh, people here. Let's see. And there it is. It's showing up right here. And so here is the new contact in my database or in my Google contacts called third example. They work at Acme Co. They have this email. They have this phone number. That's perfect. Now the missing piece here, the, the, the true sync is where this is going to get updated every time I make changes to my Airtable data, right? So let's test that part. I will make a change here and maybe it's the number three RD for their email, three RD at example.com. 
Well, now that has changed my last update time, which means that Zapier will yet again run. Again, it takes a couple minutes, so I'm gonna do it manually just for the sake of this. We see we find a new record, we update it. Let's pop back into Google Contacts, and we see that it still has the old email address. Let's refresh this and go into this person, and there it is, an update on the email. So how cool is this? Any work that you're doing in Airtable in your CRM or you know, managing your business will now keep your Google contacts fully synced so that when you're on the go, you can pick up the phone or send an email without having to worry about if you have the updated information there. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this and how you use these automations to keep yourself all synced up across all your devices. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.